What kind of students are admitted to Oxford? The newly released 2020 admissions report can help us to answer that question. My name is Sam, and this is Oxcentric. In this video, I'm going to be talking about some of the headlines and trends in demography from the Annual Admissions Statistical Report 2020, and hopefully not totally bore you in the process. A few caveats. Firstly, international students are excluded from the statistics on education, socioeconomic status and ethnicity. Additionally, the UCAS form has limitations, such as when students can't identify as their chosen gender or don't declare their ethnicity. Finally, some of the proportions do vary quite heavily from year to year, especially in the smaller sample sizes. For this reason, I'm going to be using the three-year average from 2017 to 2019 quite a lot in this video. Without further ado, let's dive into the data. The headlines. Right at the start of the report we have some key stats regarding the changes in student intake from 2015 to 2019, and here they are. Firstly, the proportion from state schools rose from 55.6% to 62.3%. The proportion identifying as black and minority ethnic rose from 14.5% to 22.1%. The proportion from socioeconomically disadvantaged areas rose from 8.6% to 12.2%. The proportion from areas with low progression to higher education rose from 10.8% to 14.0%. The proportion declaring a disability rose from 6.9% to 9.4%. The proportion of women rose from 47.5% to 54.4%. And Finally, the overall number of undergraduate applications has risen 25.3% since 2015. So that's a bit overwhelming, let's break that down. Break down, break down. No, no, wrong type of breakdown, I'm my own editor, I should do better than this. Category 1, UK school type. Overall, state school students are underrepresented at Oxford. We can see there is still a noticeable gap between the ratio of state to independent school pupils achieving A star A star A and the ratio of state to independent school pupils getting into Oxford. For the last five years, the proportion has been steadily increasing and is now at its highest level. However, in terms of actual places, this is still lower than the peak of state school students in 2002. This disparity can mostly be explained by the increasing number of international students at Oxford. 2019 was the first year where every college admitted more than 50% of its UK students from a state school, with Mansfield admitting the highest percentage at 94%, and Christchurch admitting the least at 50.2%. Mathematics and computer science had the greatest proportion admitted from UK state schools, whereas classics had the least. These variations are partly a consequence of less mainstream subjects like classics simply not being offered at UK state schools, meaning that most students will just never consider them. Many state school students apply to the most oversubscribed subjects like law and physics. Category 2. BME. Oxford admits a similar proportion of BME students to other Russell Group universities, but less than the average of all UK universities. The 2019 intake of 22.1% is close to the overall percentage of BME students in England and Wales who achieved AAA or above in their exams, and it is also above the percentage of BME in the 19 to 26 year old population. Generally, BME students are more likely to apply for some of the most competitive courses. For example, more BME than white students apply to the highly competitive medicine course. Broadly, all colleges admitted a similar proportion of BME students in the late teens. However, outliers were Mansfield with the highest proportion and Worcester with the lowest. Medicine admitted the highest proportion of BME students and biomedical sciences the least. For most categories, proportions are close to the national representation, except for Asian and mixed heritage students who are disproportionately represented. After seeing only marginal progress from 2015 to 2018, the BME percentage saw its largest leap in 2019. Hopefully this is a sign of good things to come. Oxford do give more detailed breakdowns by ethnicity, but I'm not going to be going into them here. You can find them in the full report. Category 3. Disadvantage. There's two main measures of disadvantage which the report uses. Polar relates how good or bad progression to higher education in an area is, with quintile 1 being the worst and 5 being the best. ACORN ranks how socioeconomically advantaged an area is. It is more localised than Polar, with category 1 being the most affluent areas and category 5 being the least. Both ACON and Polar statistics for Oxford broadly align with the national statistics, suggesting the university is meeting the targets. This is aided in part by the unique scheme which helps Oxford to assist students in these categories applying. The percentages of students in these categories have overall been rising for the past five years. From 2017 to 2019, Mansfield once again admitted the most students from both disadvantaged categories. Pembroke have the lowest intake for Polar 1 and 2, whereas Exeter and Lincoln were drawn lowest on the percentage for ACON 4 and 5. Of the undergraduate courses, Theology and Religion had the greatest percentage intake for Polar 1 and 2, whereas Geography had the lowest. In the same period, History and Politics had the greatest percentage for ACON 4 and 5, and Earth Sciences had the least. Refreshing. Now, back to the graphs. Category 4. 
Disability. Oxford saw a marginal increase in disabled students admitted in 2019, rising to around 9%. The university is trying to improve access, and I would expect this percentage to rise further in coming years, particularly as more students are formally diagnosed with these issues. The most common disabilities are learning difficulties like ADHD, followed by mental health problems. Category 5. Gender. In 2017, Oxford had more female than male students for the first time, and since then this value has only continued to rise. Hopefully, gender parity will only continue to improve at Oxford. Oxford has a smaller proportion of female students than the averages of both the Russell Group and the UK universities as a whole. However, it still slightly overrepresents compared to the national statistics of students achieving AA+. Regarding colleges, Balliol presently has the largest proportion of male students, whereas the Queen's College has the largest proportion of female students. Biomedical sciences had the largest proportion of female students, whereas maths and computer science had the least. In general, humanities and social science courses tend to have more female than male students, whereas natural sciences courses have the opposite. Whilst I think the amount of female students will continue to rise in future, I think the next focus for the university is going to be on gender parity in each specific course. This is particularly true for STEM courses, which more men successfully apply to, and generally lead to higher paying jobs in future. Not too many more graphs now, I promise. Category 6. Regions. London and South East made up almost half of Oxford admissions in the three year period, with admissions from the South East declining slightly and those from London rising strongly. The overall trends show at least a slight rise in applications from every region, with the overall sharpest rise being seen in London. The South East and London are both noticeably overrepresented compared to their number of AAA students, particularly so for London. However, Scotland and Northern Ireland are both significantly underrepresented. We can explain some of these disparities easily. For example, Scottish students may choose to remain in Scotland to receive free higher education, and Northern Irish students may have more logistical problems travelling to Oxford than other UK regions. Aside from the issue of affluence, the southern regions closest to Oxford are some of the most geographically convenient to reach the university. Additionally, Northern English students may choose to go to one of the other reputable Russell Group universities in the north for similar geographic reasons. However, I would also propose that better funded state schools and increased outreach in London mean that this inequality will only deepen in future, meaning that Oxford could risk being seen as unattainable for Northern students. China, Singapore and the USA are the three largest regions of origin for international students at Oxford, with China nearly doubling the figure for Singapore. Oxford is currently admitting more international students than the average UK university. However, Covid-19 and Brexit could both affect this, so in 2020 it could be a different situation. Conclusion. So, those are the stats. I've covered the main points in this video, however I'm going to leave a link to the reports in the description for you to look through the raw data if you wish, as well as a link to the Sherwell, which is an article that includes some more lovely graphs. I know this video won't be everyone's cup of tea, but I find it's a really interesting insight into outreach at the University of Oxford and the progress being made. If you're in an underrepresented group and considering applying, the big takeaway here is that things are levelling up and Oxford is a place for you, so do apply. However, this can't illustrate the difference in student experience, which is a nuance that stats can't quite convey. After all those graphs though, I think I need a light down. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe for more content. Of state to independent students, retrieving... Retrieving? Why do I want to say retrieving so badly?